This topic will cover the subject of governance. Fiduciary duty. Most homeowner associations are nonprofit corporations, and therefore, as a director, you have a fiduciary duty. You have a legal obligation to act in good faith. To govern with a care that an ordinary, prudent person in a like position would exercise under similar circumstances. And lastly, to govern in a manner that is in the best interest of the corporation. Some of your responsibilities will include participating in all the meetings and communications, to respect parliamentary procedure, to maintain confidentiality in executive sessions, to accept the board's decisions even though you may not agree with them, to promote the interests of the association and avoid conflict, to disclose financial conflicts of interest, to ensure that the finances are well managed, to manage the enforcement of covenants and governing documents, to place the interest of the association above your personal interest, and to resign from the board if you feel you aren't able to accept these responsibilities. Now, at some point in time, individually or collectively as part of the board, somebody is going to ask you the question, what gives you the right to do such and such? And in fact, your authority comes from the de general statutes and the covenants of the association. And some of those things that you have authority to do include creating and amending the bylaws, to adopt the budget, to impose assessments and special assessments, to enforce the covenants and levy fines, to place a lien on properties, to enter into contracts for services, to incur liabilities and borrow money, to sue and be sued, to act with emergency powers in special situations, and to do all things necessary and convenient, not inconsistent with the law, to further the activities and the affairs of the corporation. There may be liabilities. However, directors are generally not liable for actions taken when performing the duties of their office consistent with fiduciary duty. It's critical that the association maintain directors and officers insurance, oftentimes called D&O insurance. If the association is a claimant or a defendant in a lawsuit, and to the extent that the D&O insurance does not cover the legal fees, keep in mind that the legal fees and or the judgment represent costs that will be borne by the members of the association. Now, what can you do that exposes you or the board to liability? These are things we want to be careful for, such as failure to govern in accordance with the laws and the governing documents, failure to provide due process, inconsistently enforcing the covenants or the rules, having a conflict of interest, failure to meet in executive session when appropriate, curbside conversations that imply that you have individual authority oftentimes will trigger a lawsuit. Publicly disclosing the names of members with delinquencies. And lastly, email exchanges that become discoverable in a lawsuit. These cover the topics that are most important in the area of governance. The next topic that we'll take up will be legal considerations.